Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We're adding to the continuation of the battle of AI, dealing with the curse of defeat. Now, a lot of us don't realize when we bring an accursed thing into our home, we are opening ourselves up to infirmity, that's sickness, defeat, that's failure, lack of victory, Demonic attacks. Mm. Uh, oh my goodness, the list just goes on. It can be so much coming against us. Financial hardship, loss. I mean, a, a majority of ways that we can suffer loss because we have allowed the accursed thing in our homes or someone else in our family has brought an accursed thing into our home. Whether we know it or whether it's unbeknownst to us, it is still in our home. Ergo, the door to the demonic is wide open for Satan to come in and wreak havoc in your life, family, and com com total situation. Okay, getting tongue-tied. Now, this is what you have to look at. Many of you have dealt with hardship after hardship after hardship after hardship. Now, there are times it can be part of where you live. You may be in a region where there is so much loosed demonic activity that your life gets caught up in that same madness, especially if not everyone in your household is living a holy life. Now, another thing you have to consider, some of you deal with a lot of issues and have dealt with them in your family, in your lineage, because some relatives, some ancestors have dabbled in the occult, have dabbled in witchcraft and the like. So you have to remember, no matter what, you can say Jesus till the cows come home. You can pray morning, noon, and night. But if you have cursed things in your house, if you have cursed things in your life, guess what? You are still at, I won't say mercy, but you're at. You're at the whim. You're just at his disposal. Satan can just toy with you and jerk your life around because you have given him legal right through the demonic cursed items in your life. It can be cursed forms of entertainment in your life. That's why I won't watch things like Harry Potter. I won't watch demonic movies, movies that glorify Satan. No, 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 no. I don't mess with that because I don't want anything demonic, not even getting into my ear gate, eye gate. I don't want to, I don't want to be around it. I don't want to be around Satan's atmosphere. That's not me. No, no. I'm about the Lord. I'm about God. And he's about me. And I'm not concerned. I don't want to be bothered with anything dark or evil. So listen to this. When you're going through changes and just things seem to be beating at you and you're having demonic dreams and you're having demonic thoughts and you're having all kind of temptations and things are just breaking loose and you're just losing control, just wreaking havoc in your life and you can't figure out what's the source. Go through your house. First of all, the first thing you do is sit down. This is those of you who are born again Christians. Sit down and ask God to do a reassessment of your life. That's number one. Ask him if you, your attitude, your thought processes, your emotions, your words have opened the door. As Lucita said in the previous video, you cannot bless with a filthy mouth. You hear me? God says in, in, in the book of James chapter 3 that bitter water and sweet water cannot come from the same source. It's impossible. 
blessing and cursing should not come out of the same mouth. So you have to really watch what you allow, the little liberties, the little rights you think you have a right to do. You, you are sometimes, you know, the Bible says we are called unto liberty, but don't use liberty for an occasion to the flesh. And sometimes when we allow the flesh to reign, rule, and abide, we are allowing the devil to come in and play all kind of little games on our lives. So you have to be very, very careful. This is not a fear-mongering uh, video. This is a warning because you cannot play with darkness and expect God to shed his light on your life. It's not going to happen. He will not commingle with evil of any form. The sad part is there are too many born again Christians who are willing to do just that. They are willing to commingle because their flesh is titillated by some of the evil they engage in. Hmm. Hmm. Think about it. But by the same token, they pray to God and expect an immediate answer. They pray to God for deliverance. They pray to God for blessing. They pray to God for favor. Well, how are you going to expect God? You know, if you have a woman or if you have a man, depending upon who you are, there is no way you're going to be okay with your better half screwing around out there with Tom, Dick, and Harry or Susie, Mary, and Jane. You're not going to be with that. But guess what? You expect God to do it. Not all of you. Not all of you. Not all. Some of you who play both hands against the middle. You expect God to be okay with whatever you do because you're forgiven and this is the dispensation of grace and God is a good God. God is a merciful God. God is a God of love. Guess what? But he's also a God of hate. He hates sin. He hates evil. He hates the demonic. He hates the cursed thing. And just like he punished Achan in Joshua chapter 7, he punished them. He not only punished them, he destroyed them and the accursed things. The cursed things he destroyed with fire. Now, if God does it, what makes you think it's okay now? Because you have Jesus. Jesus said, I am the fulfillment of the law. He's not scratching it off the map. He's the fulfillment of it. And if God doesn't want the accursed thing in your life, what makes you think it's okay? Because you have a savior. Huh. Okay. Now, all I want to say is this. I'm going to try to keep this short. Those of you who where hell is breaking loose in your family, let's say, whether it be your family members, your family affairs, whatever the case may be, do an assessment of your life. That's number one. Your attitude. Have you chosen not to forgive? Have you chosen to keep your bitterness? Have you chosen to live a life of anger, wrath, and spite? What have you chosen to do? Or have you chosen God's way? Now, if you've chosen God's way and you're living it out in every way, shape, and form, then check your house. Check your house out and go through with a fine tooth comb. See if there are any things, any items in your house, any things there with labels, with the word Diablo, uh, devil, hell, evil, whatever, Lucifer, anything that's in there that is relatable to the devil. Anything that is connected to him and his ways should be done away with. Period. No ifs, ands, or buts. I don't care how much this sucker costs. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. Achan had the Babylonian garments. He had, I think, five shekels of silver and he had, a, a, I forget how many weights of gold. So he had some valuable stuff. What did God do? Burn it. 
What did he tell the Israelites to do? Stone them. The whole family died. The whole family. Because of one man's sin. One, and it was a hidden sin. Nobody knew it but him. And the whole family had to pay for it. Be careful. Be careful. Because it's not your business. You say, oh, this is my business. Y'all stay out of my business. Guess what? If it involves your family, if you live in that house with that family, it is their business because what you do affects them. Think about that before you go dabbling and playing and playing with, witch with witchcraft and tarot cards and Ouija boards. That should not be in your house. God will not bless a curse. Remember that. That's your warning. This isn't love. I'm not fussing at you. I'm just trying to drive the point home with my New York big mouth. God bless you. And thank you for listening to Pat's Two Cents. It's all in love. Believe me, believe it or not, it is. <laughs>